know this entire telecast ladies and gentlemen is just uh, was designed just to spark the imagination or re-spark the imagination we forget when i when i say re-spark we forget that indonesia is actually a neighboring country from uh, the Andaman Nicobar Islands is less than 500 nautical miles to Aceh. And uh, for a lot of people who travel to Bali, which is of course uh, a, a great tourist destination, uh, and we sort of know that, yeah, you know, there's a Ramayana out there, but we don't understand that the Lord Ganesh is, is, a, is, is just part and parcel of Balinese life. It's, it's in every home. And it's, it's a very strange realization to have that it is so familiar because the roots are so connected over so many millennia and we need to rediscover all of that. It will be for the good of the world, that rediscovery, that reconnection, that familiarity, that comfort that comes from that familiarity, the shared history, the shared tradition, the shared stories. Speaking of which, uh, let's hop across to Bali in Indonesia where uh, Putu Adi Bardhuan is joining us on uh, the broadcast. Uh, Thank you so much for doing this special report for us from, from Bali. Let me just ask you, you know, I was telling the story of Lord Ganesh. Uh, Putu, you know, when in terms of Ganesh and Shiva and Vishnu, what is your understanding in Bali of these, of these sort of quote-unquote deities or uh, le legends and stories from India? In Bali, uh, we are, has a Shivaism concept. Right. The first one, Shiva is some concept. That's a right. uh, Shiva Dev uh, has a to be uh, the big Dev in Bali, and then the other Dev is a, has like a to breaking down like that. And then the popular Dev in Bali we call Shiva. Interesting. So Lord Shiva, I'm told there is something, and forgive my pronunciation, Kesak or Kechak dance. Uh, which is done in Bali, which I'm told is based on the Ramayana. Can you t can you tell us a bit about it, please? The um, the the composer to produce the Kechak then is inspired by gamelan, ba Balinese gamelan, right? But okay. the composer bring the gamelan to the Kechak then without instrument. In Kechak then instrument only po uh, only focal verbal with the mood only like that. That the focal verbal produce the. Um, produce the melodies and uh, like that and for the Ramayana story it's a combined. The Ramayana story is not only there's in the Kechak then in the Balinese Gamelan traditional there is a Ramayana story as well. So okay. Ramayana story is a combined with the Kechak then to telling about the how Ramayana uh, learn about the life to do writing in this world, I okay. think like that. So, okay, so what is then your understanding of the story of Ramayana in Indonesia? You know, what is, what, how is it absorbed and what moral lessons are drawn to this day in, in modern Bali? The main story in Ramayana that is uh, Satya Yuga. We are in Bali understanding about a four era, okay? Karta Yuga, Satya Yuga, Dvipara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Ramayana in uh, Satya Yuga. Satya Yuga is a... Uh, the spiritual people is uh, more, many more than not spiritual, not do spiritual. So, but the spiritual is uh, learn about the love, about the respect, and the Sita and Rahwana and the Rama is the symbolic. If you are not respect, your attitude like a Rahwana, right? When you are do respect and love, your attitude and your you doing like a Rama, like that. Okay. So, in the Ramayana, I learn about the love and respect, and to get the uh, peace and to get the good spiritual condition in our soul, like that. It's not about love story. I uh, when you say I love you to your girlfriend, it's not like that. That's the learning about the okay. love and respect to. Okay. Humanity. All right. Okay. So now, uh, you know, to the best of my understanding, you are standing in front of uh, what is the Pura Besakhi Temple uh, there in Bali. So I, I know uh, that you filed a report for us. Let's let's just uh, let's just take a chance to listen into that report and then open up this conversation to live guests joining us from Indonesia. Uh, let's listen to that report. In the 
heart of Bali, Indonesia, tourists from across the world come together to witness the marvelous Kechak dance, the Balinese adaptation of the Hindu epic Ramayana. The Kechak dance is a reminder of the preservation of the strong roots of Hinduism in the Muslim majority island nation of Indonesia. Where stories of both the Mahabharat and the Ramayan can be traced back to the 1st and 8th centuries respectively. Today they remain alive in Balinese culture through art, music and dance. Known as the city of temples, Bali is home to some of the world's most famous and ancient Hindu mandirs. Today, Newsx takes you for the first time to the Pura Besaki Temple in Bali, Indonesia. Nestled on the slopes of Mount Agung, the Pura Besaki is the largest and most important temple in Balinese Hinduism. Everybody, Om Swastiastu. Uh, today, we are in uh, the mother of the temple in Bali. We call Besaki Temple. Right now, I am here in the outside of the Besaki Temple. You can see uh, the background. That's one. The main gates uh, in the temple over there. We must be going up, and then around of here. This uh, the outside place in the Besaki Temple. You can see around. There is a uh, some part for the small temple the B side of the main temple of the Besaki, like that. Okay, so, the Besaki temple uh, located in Rendang, Karangasem. If you stay in Ubud, you can go from Ubud in uh, two hours, from Ubud, uh, rip in uh, Besaki temple, like that. And you will pass the Kintamani, and then the Batur temple as well. From the Batur to Besaki temple, you take the time in uh, one hour. The, 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 the highway is a very, very quiet and the, during, uh, during on the road, you will see a lot of the tree, the B-side, and the road is a very, very quiet, very, very calm down, and the weather is a very, very good. And you can see, guys, our, my behind, that's the Besaki Temple, and you, uh, I will explain about the architecture and then the history of the Besaki Temple. My lab space is uh, the first, the first space uh, where we we familiar name is a uh, Rishi Markandio. Once a rival in Bali, he stay and uh, put five stone. We call a panchadatu. Let's go. Let's uh, we see where the guys. We can see this place. This point. You can close uh, this point, you can shoot the Prasasti behind me. This point is uh, the first arrival Rishi Markandiyo uh, when arrived in Bali. He's put uh, the five stone we call uh, Panchadatu. The Panchadatu is the fundamental of the building like a uh, temple and then the Bali island to make a sustain and then to make a balance thing for the living life people in Bali like that. Before, before, before he do uh, Panchadatu, put the ground, the Bali, uh, the, the Bali island, I'm sorry, the Bali island is not balanced. The not, uh, it's not balanced and the island is like a floating, like a floating island like that. It can be strong and the island is can cannot stay too, too long like that. So the Brasil Gandio uh, make her and then put five stone before build and make Besaki temple like that. Here. You can see this this point. The Panchadatu is a gold, silver and uh, prungu and Tembaga, titanium, and then uh, iron, like that, stone iron. 
Okay, for the next we go to main gate in the middle of the Besaki Temple. Let's go. A World Heritage Site, the Pura Besaki Temple, is a complex of 23 temples with step terraces and flights of stairs that ascend to several courtyards. Everybody, my behind you can see this leader is the main gate entrance to the Besaki Temple. Okay, uh, inside we will see three, the big statue we call Padma Tiga. Uh, inside the, at the main gate, we will, I will explain about the, the first one is his history of the Besaki Temple and then what is the Padma Tiga and then who is the god uh, stay in Besaki Temple. Okay, let's go. We're now headed to the main spire or the Meru structure known as the Pura Penataran Anung. This ladder is the signature of the Basaki Temple. If you see in the internet or a photo, this ladder is iconic, very, very iconic. And then the architecture is produced from the local people, Balinese people. We are right now here at the second gate in Basaki Temple. My behind with the big gate, you can see this tall about 30 meter, right? 30 meter high. And this gate, uh, the, bisa, the, the, the behind of the gate is already the main gate of the Besake Temple. You can see the architecture made from the Balinese people. Very, very beautiful like this. The material is uh, from stone volcano of Agung Mountain. Okay? The Agung Mountain is beside of the Besake Temple. Because the weather right now, a little bit like a shadow, a little bit sun. A fusion, so the mountain agung of cover it. Okay, so let's go. I will show you the detail of the material of the gate in Besaki Temple. Black stone like this. It's a very very strong material and a very very hard. Right? You can see the 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 cover is a, not too flat. You will see small hole every part at the stone but this quality is very strong okay from the first of the building Besaki temple the material is the same from the Vulcano stone the Agung Mountain Vulcano in 1916 that's the second Vulcano and Bali when the Agung Mountain is very, very like the situation is not, you cannot imagine when the Agung Mountain is Vulcano. You can see, you can imagine about, about that. But after that, the Balinese people is growing up very, very good and we get the material like this. Okay, so at the second gate, we are finished. And right now, I will bring you to the main gate of Besake Temple. Let's go. Swastiastu. That's one you can see the biggest mountain in Bali, Agung Mountain, is over there. You are very lucky, can she with a good weather like this. The symbolic center of the main sanctuary is the Padmasana or the lotus throne derived from Sanskrit. It dates back to the 17th century and it is the ritual focus of the entire temple complex. The lotus throne in the form of a tower crowned with an empty throne to worship Ida Sanghyang, a manifestation of the Supreme God in Balinese Hindu. Right now I am at the main gate in Besaki Temple. In this area, you can see over there the three big statue. And I will explain the 
a little bit history, okay? Short story. Uh, what's the Basaki Temple is a uh, buil. This place, this point, the first time Rasi Markandio get a revelation from the guard, like you, the, the 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 part or uh, the part of the pioneer, part of the pioneer of the Hindu Dharma in Bali until this area right now that you know in in Bali if you come to Bali right and then the big statue at the big hand is a uh, we call Padma Tiga Padma Tiga symbolic is, uh, is uh, from Tripurusa Tripurusa is a uh, Shiva Sada Shiva and a uh, Parama Shiva okay and Tripurusa it mean of the three level awareness of the spiritual like that the big place uh, in man gate is a very very the biggest between the other temple run of the Besaki. dating back centuries the pura Besaki temple is regarded as a central temple to hinduism in bali representing the balinese hindu belief of three hita kirana meaning life on earth must be lived in harmony and balance between man, society, nature and God. Bureau Report, News X. All right. Uh, thank you uh, uh, for that lovely report, uh, very detailed about the Besaki Temple. Let me now hop across uh, to Dr. Dharmasya. Uh, Dr. Dharmasya is uh, a priest and author based, based out of Indonesia, joining us on the broadcast live. Uh, Dr. Dharmasya, uh, welcome to NewsX. Uh, can you tell us where you're based out of, sir? Uh, now I'm in Malta. I, I'm from Bali, Indonesia, but I'm now in Malta. Okay, I see a Bhagavad Gita uh, Jayanti uh, poster behind <laughs> you. What, what is that about, sir? It says 2021. Uh, that uh, we celebrate Bhagavad Gita Jayanti every year uh, with uh, uh, like... Uh, 35 countries people joined it. It's a big gathering. Okay, so uh, what are the cultural roots here, sir? Because uh, to for people watching the broadcast, uh, despite the later controversies, the first president of Indonesia, of independent Indonesia, was Sukarno. Uh, and he had a daughter. And her the daughter's name was Sukarno Putri. Now, anybody who understands the basics of Hindi and Sanskrit knows Putri means daughter. Uh, the Garuda... Uh, is part of the national emblem of Indonesia, which of course is a Muslim majority country. So, what are the linkages sir, that you've experienced growing up in Bali? Uh, we we go to the uh, all this uh, what we can find the about the relationship between India and Indonesia. Uh, uh, that is in Ramayana Valmiki. It means uh, more than 7,000 years ago, the relationship of uh, India and Indonesia already there. So we found in Yudhakanda of uh, Ramayana Valmiki that uh, when uh, Sugriva sent uh, the Dutas to find out uh, where about uh, Sita, all over the world. And when he sent, when Sugriva sent the uh, Dutas, Vanara Dutas, to southern side, uh, Sugriva said, guided them, Yatna Vantu Java Dvipam, Saptaraju Pasubhitam, you all, you go to the uh, Java Dvip. Uh, there you will find seven kingdoms and etc. Et he, he explained about how people live there, etc. Et so the relationship between India and Indonesia, the oldest maybe we can say that is uh, more than 7,000 years ago. Okay, so you know for people watching the broadcast, even the name Indonesia, right? It comes from the Greek uh, India and Nisha of course means islands. Uh, so but do we understand it in a modern context, Dr. Dharmasya? For, for you growing up, uh, the you know stories of Ramayana or the, or the folklore of Shiva or Vishnu or the Garuda, how well were these known to you, sir? Yeah, it's uh, our blood, it's our culture, our, our everything. 
it uh, we uh, we have this all uh, sanskrit and 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 and, and now this year you can see hindu but it's sanatana it's a tradition we have this in our blood and even many of us uh, uh, accepted not hindu yeah non hindus they are still practicing some uh, meditation or many of them they still doing a uh, dasanskar uh, cremation it's a uh, our blood and the sanskrit is everywhere the names of the street the name of the shop the name of people it's a uh, sanskrit and even in uh, government principal uh, guidance we have uh, we use sanskrit really F- fascinating so so what do we do sir i think now bali of course uh, there a lot of indians travel but for indonesians coming to india to see the the you know the cultural links uh, how do we promote this how do we take it further sir um this is very good so i used to say that uh, we no need to go through religious way but we go to through uh, art and culture that will be the best way to reconnect india and indonesia and when we reconnect india and indonesia through art and culture it's everything uh, will be inside of this for example ramayana mahabharata so in the ramayana everything are there we can learn so many things everything uh, will guide us that as uh, we have in our life there are three part of our life material life and the second is a religious life and the third is spiritual life these three we can get and we can be guided by ramayana and okay. mahabharata so how, what is the so so art and culture. okay so what is the the buzz or the view or the even the awareness of uh, people back home in bali sir friends and family about this ayodhya ram temple inauguration which is happening Uh, it's a great news it's a great news and it's uh, not only the celebration of india but it's our celebration it's a great news and we understand this as uh, the starting point of the the showing of the greatness of bharata of india so this is a, a, a starting point as a message that uh, india may become the uh, the the guru for the world through this ramayana but not to bring ramayana to into the religious way but through art and culture and if they manage to bring ayodhya as the center for the world for the culture and art and people will come there and the the ayodhya will become the sa prathama vishwara and from ayodhya it's bring out spreading out to all over the world all kind of good good messages okay all right appreciate your time for joining us on this telecast ladies and gentlemen we've taken you hopefully uh through an interesting journey in the span of the past couple of hours tracing uh with reports because you can talk about it you can show the photographs but you know when when you have people there who are touching it feeling it who are locals who are reflecting how they absorb it it's a completely different uh, ambiance of how uh, you know how we can relate to it dr darmasia thank you very much for joining us uh, all the best uh, as you also uh, partake in your own way in the in the ram temple inauguration in ayodhya uh, our special telecast on this themology concludes we have traversed thailand in ayodhya we have traversed cambodia in the capital phnom penh now let's go to the vietnamese capital ho chi minh a uh, city where uh, min niguin is joining us min thank you so much uh, for doing this special report for newsx really really appreciate the effort you put into this so how was your experience i believe you visited uh, the mariamman temple how was your visit there oh when i come here the first thing i feel is very spiritual okay everything is very quiet i stay inside and i listen to my soul and feel very relaxed And then the second thing is I super super fascinating with all the structure, the material and the architecture from here. 
from the color, from the god, and from the way that they make all this beautiful sizing. Okay, all the temple and then the main color is gold and yellow, which make the temple much more lighter. And another one is I'm super fascinating. Is a lot of people come in. Local people, right. tourist people, and Indian people. They come here okay. to do their worship and to pray and ask. Okay, so pray so for their luck. So, I mean, what have you learned about that temple particularly today? That you know, perhaps uh, you weren't aware of earlier. Okay, so um, it's, this is not my first time to visit this place. It's actually six years ago. I right. with me and my friend was here, but we just do a quick tour around in the main floor. And one thing I don't know about this place is they have an upper floor, which is the second floor. And then they have so many statues and a place to worship in an open area in the second place. Okay. Okay. So next time, if I come with my friend or family, I definitely take okay. them to both floors, the main okay. floor. Now, I know you filed that floor. report for us and we'll just go to that in just a second. But so what stood out most in the, in the temple complex? We can see it behind you. Well, what, stu what stood out most to you while you were filing the report? Okay, so the thing that surprised me the most is definitely the structure and the material. As we know, it's Vietnam, used to be a colony of French, and later on is the colony of the United States. So our architecture is a little bit of Western style. Interesting. But here, when you come to this temple, everything is Asia, purely Asia and purely Hindu. So yeah, first thing I look, I said, oh, the color is why is so many color mixed together? And then it's make a perfect, perfectly beautiful temple. Okay, I, mean, okay. I have to I have to ask you this. You know, it's a, it's it's a question that all of us don't perfectly know and understand because the history oftentimes is, is rather vague. But what does the words Champa or the Champa Kingdom actually mean to you? What what does Hinduism mean to you? How do you how do you understand it? Uh, sitting there in Ho Chi Minh City. So according to the history. The Hindi, the Hindu people come to Vietnam very early, about the second or third of century, and most of them living in Binh Thuan or Ninh Thuan province, which is in the central of Vietnam. And when they come in as a royal, all of them is royal, but to because Vietnam has so many war, so they got almost wiped out. Mm. So right now. The population of the Hindu people in Vietnam is still there, but it's very, very little. Okay, now I'm, to the best of my understanding, I'm told that the Maison complex, which was, used to be the political capital of the ancient Champa kingdom, it still exists today in Vietnam. Is, is that true? What can you tell us about, about the Maison complex? You asked me about Maison complex. So Maison complex is the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999 and located in the central of Vietnam and right now is in Wang Nam province. Okay, it's situated within the elevated geological basin surrounded by the ring of the mountain, which provide the watershed for the Tu Bom River, one of the biggest river in the central of Vietnam. And Mi Sung is remarkable architecture that's developed over the period of 10th century. If I'm not wrong, it's come from the 4th century to the 13th century. And during the war, Mi Sung has significant suffer from the bombing. And, but after 1975, when we got independent, the conservation and the restoration work is begin. Okay. And now it's become okay. one so of I'll, the I'll most correct my pronunciation. in Mi Sung. Mi Sung. So in, in the complex itself, where does it fit in? into you know, modern day Vietnamese thought in terms of its historical and cultural preservation? Mi Sung is very crucial because it's a unique evidence to show that, to show to the young generation that all the Hindu people is come here and exist in Vietnam very early. And today, Mi Sung is help people to understand the culture of the Hindu people and I am very, and right now the government of Vietnam is doing the culture preservation on a daily basis. Okay. And as, I, as, uh, as far as I know, every year they have a budget 
to restore and renov renovation the Mission complex. Okay. And the young the young generation as us, we should come and visit Mission as we have time to know what Mission look like and we can appreciate more about the history as well as the blending culture between Vietnam and India. Okay, so I mean uh for us sitting here in India, and of course you're sitting there in, in, in Ho Chi Minh City, do we really understand that there is a thousand, two thousand year old civilizational link that actually there is a lot of closeness in our shared history and, and, and culture, or have we just in, in modern day sort of disconnected from it? What, what do you make of these, of these ties uh, as you see it as a Vietnamese? According to the history, the, Indian pe the Hindu people come to Vietnam very early. Yeah. On the second and third century, they are already here. And most of them living in the Ninh Thuong and Binh Thuong province, which is right in the central of Vietnam. At first, they come here as a royal class, just like a king, a queen, a princess. Okay? They do all the high-end class work. They don't do all the labor work. But when the work come out, and they got almost wiped out. Okay, so sadly, and nowadays, there's still in Hindu people in Vietnam, but the population is very little. But the existing help to Vietnamese people to understand more about the culture and the, the history, which earlier we have mixed, oh, sorry, we have a blend culture, Vietnamese and Hindu as well. Okay. All right, all right. Just okay. Let, let, let's uh, let's hop across because I know you filed that report from us from the temple complex and where you're standing uh, in in the Vietnamese capital. Let's listen into that report. This is modern-day Vietnam, a clear mix of Buddhist, Chinese and to a large extent, French colonial influence. But in 2020, findings of the ASI left the world stunned when a monolithic shivling dating to the 9th century CE was unearthed in central Vietnam at the magnificent Maison Sanctuary. Every turn in the sanctuary points to a deep civilizational connect between India and Vietnam. The ruins of Maison serve as testament to the ancient Hindu civilizational ethos that ran deep in Vietnam and continue to be preserved till date. A group of ancient Hindu temples dedicated to Lord Shiv, Maison was built between 4th and 14th century by the Champa kings of Vietnam. It was used for religious ceremonies and as a burial ground for charm royalty and national heroes. Mysore was closely connected to Champa cities of Indrapura and Simhapura. It included about 71 temples along with several stone inscriptions in both Sanskrit and Cham. While much of Mysore complex was destroyed during the Vietnam War, there is now a clear effort from the Vietnamese as well as the Indian governments to work closely in the preservation of the Mysore complex which continues to serve as a reminder of Vietnam's glorious Hindu past. Today, NewsX takes you for the first time ever to the Mariman Temple So we are in the Merriman Temple, which is right in the heart of Ho Chi Minh City, District 1. And for, for those of you who don't know where District 1 is, so District 1 is when it's all the main building is, all the main government building is, like City Hall, like Independent Palace. And if you're heading this way for about five minutes, you're going to meet the most iconic market is Bentan Market. And if you're hitting this way, about five more minutes, you're gonna hit the most greenest park 
in this city we call Tao Dan Park. And right in front of you is the most unique Hindu temple we call Merriman Temple. And look at the outside, okay? You see, very colorful, okay? You see all the, the lion, the god, and you know, build all the way up this very high. And look at all the, all the color, unique and very distinctive, and it's beautiful, okay? So now I'm gonna take you a quick tour to go inside. Okay, we have both sides with the lion. So the lion is uh, represent for the, a guardian, okay? So the lion here to protect the temple, make sure that nothing bad has happened, okay? So look at the lion, okay? And with the beautiful thing on top, okay? And then people, when they come in, if they want to pray for their lucky, their joy and their happiness, they put some fruit in here, okay? There's fruit, fruit of lion. We have Brahma, we have Muruga, Parvati, Shiva, Marimem, Ganesha, uh, Shiva family, and Vinshu. And in here is this the name of this temple, Marimem. Okay, so this is uh, this temple is uh, so this just talk a little bit background. This temple, this temple was built in early 20th century. Okay, and so. The purpose of building this is because by that time, there a small population of the Hindu people. They want to find a place to 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 do their worship. So this one, that's why they build this temple. And this this thing, very especially for this temple, is all the material is all import from India. Okay, and the structure is come from the Tamin, the Tamin from India. Okay, look at the structure on top. Okay, see. And the main color is always yellow, okay? So, and then on the top, right? And we have some god up there with, always with the elephant, okay? The elephant represents for the power. So in here, so we have a stick and then we just, okay? And the side, the side that said, only one stick for one person, okay? So just take one only. So I take one, okay? And now I go to the main place for worship. Okay, so take up your shoe before you go to the main place. So if you come to Vietnam, I hope you have time to visit this place. It's located in Rai District 1. And then if you don't know where to, to call it, you can ask the local people where is the Indian temple is in District 1. This beautiful Hindu temple is yet another example of India's close cultural and historic ties with Vietnam. Bureau Report, News X. All right, my, uh, my many thanks and gratitude to Min and Gwyn uh, for joining us and getting us that special report. Uh, let's open up this conversation. On the broadcast uh, with us is now Ambassador Pham San Chau. He is the former Vietnamese ambassador to India. Also joining us on the broadcast is Dr. Lethi Hangna. She's a senior researcher at the Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences. Ambassador Chau, privilege and a treat to have you back with us on NewsX. Thank you for taking out the time. Really appreciate it. Uh, let me start with the with the obvious, sir. You know, when I come to work, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I travel on the Ho Chi Minh Road in the heart of New Delhi. And uh, to a modern Indian, that's the probably the realistic imagination of a connection uh, to Vietnam. Ambassador Chow, where does the historic connection really begin? What do you know? Um, let me uh, congratulations, uh, send you the well, congratulations to the whole Indian people 
for this auspicious day before the inaugurations of the Ram Temple. Uh, I got a lot of phone call from my friends in India. They are so excited and they are saying that the whole India is beautiful, decorated and all is uh, set to the uh, auspicious day tomorrow. Now, in terms of the connection between India and Vietnam, I want to stress on two features. The first one is that, as you mentioned in the previous broadcast, uh, there's a link between Champa Kingdom of Vietnam and Chola Kingdom uh, in India. And the two kingdoms have uh, uh, exchanged uh, a gift and they also exchange uh, princes and princess. They have cross marriage. Wow. And that's therefore it's uh, be, and thanks to that, uh, Vietnam, which was part of Indochina, and Indochina means that Vietnam is influenced by two civilizations Chinese civilization and Indian civilization. And Chinese civilization is more felt in the northern part of Vietnam, whereas Indian uh, civilization is more felt in the southern part of Vietnam, starting from Champa, former Champa region down. And therefore, we can uh, say that the link between our two countries went it back long, long when we have a Champa, which is a Hindu, a Hindu country. That is the first link. The second link is that it's less than uh, uh, we also some some scholars said that Buddhism came from also uh, came from uh, Hinduism. And uh, uh, Buddhism came to Vietnam of the second, cent uh, th second century. And that's thanks to that, uh, now Vietnam became a Buddhist country. And all thanks to the fact that Buddhism started spreading from, from Bodh Gaya, from India. So I think that is, is the two major links. Uh, that's that's uh, that now still connect the two countries. It's it's absolutely fascinating, uh, Ambassador Chow. Now, of course, you you've lived here in, in in India, and and you know that there is a boom now. A lot of Indians are traveling to Vietnam. They're you know rediscovering Vietnam, and there's a tourism boom happening in Vietnam. But are we? Do we really understand that there is a familiarity to our civilizational cultural heritage uh, that is all too obvious? But we've sort of lost connect. I mean, it's not the first thing you, you think of is that actually, you know, we have a 2000 year old shared, shared history. Uh, that is true. Uh, firstly, because uh, uh, the capital of Vietnam is, uh, I mean, I, I would like to correct that Hanoi is the capital of Vietnam. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, yes. Thank Hanoi, you for the correction. Yes. And Hanoi is located in the northern part of Vietnam. And northern part of Vietnam is more influenced by Chinese civilization and culture. And whereas in the southern part of Vietnam, especially the center part of Vietnam, where we have uh, a temple, my son temple, is in the center part of Vietnam and is 100% influ influenced by Indian civilization. So sometimes people only think that we are just uh, influenced by Chinese civilization, which is not true because the name itself, Indochina, has depicted the, the connected uh, link between two of us. Okay. And the reason why we have that absence, because we lack a direct air link. And since we have established during my term, we have established 17 di direct air link, and the people came to know more about Vietnam. Yes. And they came to go to Da Nang. And you, uh, bear in mind that all the head of state of, Viet of India, when they come to Vietnam, they only spend one day or two days to Da Nang to visit the, the Mission Temple. Because we see a, a lot of uh, Indian civilization and legacy there. Okay, so what is, for people who might not be aware, I mean, we've tried to give a glimpse through the concept of this report, but what is Mison about? What's the history of Mison that you understand, sir? Uh, let uh, let uh, people understand that uh, Vietnam is not only influenced by uh, Chinese Confucianism, that's number one, but Vietnam is also uh, influenced by Indian culture, Indian civilization, apart from Buddhism. The fact that the Lord Ram mean a lot to us in different way because the uh, Lord Ram for us is not only the the righteous king, uh, righteous uh, husband, but also reflect for us uh, uh, gender equity. I mean, he, he he only married to one wife. And he, he, he has devoted to host his life to rescue, uh, to love, to her love. He also the person of integrity. So for us, that is, I think that uh, if we make a comparison between Confucianism and, uh, uh, and uh, I put Ramism, Ramism, because we see that 
there is uh, some point which is very interesting. That is the first point. Uh, between the two, uh, also we see the responsibility, we see devotion, we see um, uh, integrity, but uh, friendship is also important, but it flicked more in the Rami, in Ramism, according to me. And Ramism in Vietnam, we also, it's not re reflected all only in the temple of, 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 of Mason, which is a UNESCO site and former kingdom of Champa, yes. but also it's, it's more in Chakyo. If you talk about Indonesia, Bali is the genuine Hindu uh, uh, city yes. uh, outside. Yeah. So if you talk about Chakyo, Chakyo now is uh, mostly is a ruin. A city, but it reflects a lot. Uh, Ram, uh, uh, a lot Ram, uh, a lot Ram has engraved in stone there, uh, and depicted as the seven uh, formation of Lord uh, Vishnu. Yes. So uh, if you go there, it, if you go there, you see a an Indian lost civilization. Which is also on that criteria. Okay. You know, I, I like it. You know, the, you're referring to Ramism and an, and and a lost Indian civilization. Uh, in Vietnam. Uh, let, let me put the same thought to Dr. Lee. Uh, uh, Dr. Lee, uh, what, is, what is your understanding of the Ramayana and, and the teaching of the, of the epic and, and what form have you found them in Vietnamese culture? It's very much a part of Vietnamese culture. I, I think everybody in Vietnam, uh, would, uh, when you mentioned the uh, the word Ramayana, it touched, I think it touched the heart of uh, almost all Vietnamese people. And uh, in our textbook also, we uh, also teach about Ramayana. And uh, in uh, uh, and nowadays, like uh, the number of people who are more interested in learning, uh, studying about Indian culture, uh, so, uh, and I think Ramayana is maybe uh, uh, a very, uh, the best start oh, to oh, learn about okay. the Indian so, culture. So, so, you know, so, so, doctor, I have to ask you, you know, the, the, you know, the Champa is a flower uh, he, here in India, and this was the kingdom of Champa. Uh, what is your understanding then of the kingdom of Champa? What, what, what mark has it left on, on Vietnamese history and modern society? Uh, because we are talking about uh, temples to Lord Vishnu, to Lord Shiva, that were part of these of of, the, of this of this uh, complex that were built uh, under the Champa Kingdom. What do you understand of these roots? The Champa Kingdom is one of the first uh, kingdoms in Vietnamese history, and it uh, showed the very the, it showed that Vietnam India cultural interaction has a very deep root, and it has like. Very, uh, it, it started uh, since uh, time immemorial. And the Champa Kingdom also showed that, like, uh, uh, it, it is interesting to know that the first, one of the first Hindu kingdom in Southeast Asia was, is located in, uh, was located in a part that is today Vietnam. Like, uh, many people would think that uh, maybe, uh, uh, the Hindu kingdom was first came to uh, uh, Cambodia or uh, Indonesia or Thailand, but I think less people know that the first Hindu kingdom came to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Champa kingdom was among the first Hindu kingdom in Southeast Asia. And uh, nowadays also we can see many Champa uh, tower throughout Viet like so central and the south of Vietnam, okay. and it is the living proof of Vietnam India okay. country. So, so, so you know, so Dr. Lee, so you know, obviously, a lot of people watching this broadcast in India and, and other parts and Indians all across the world, they'd probably be familiar reasonably now uh, over the years with Angkor Wat in Cambodia. But we've been discussing for the past uh, half an hour. We spoke with the ambassador as well about about Mison. Can you can you tell us a bit more about it? This complex. I think the Mason sanctuary now is a part of the Vietnam India cultural interaction, and um, it is also interesting that today the uh, the uh, the archaeologists, with the help of uh, with the cooperation of Indian uh, arch uh, archaeologists also and Vietnamese archaeologists, we have uh, 
um, excavated new discoveries. Like uh, recently, as you may know, in 2020, we also discovered the 9th century Shiva Stupa, which is uh, um, which means that it also shows that like there are lots of uh, India Vietnam uh, cultural interaction that uh, may have not been discovered and the mission uh, sanctuary is or the living mm -hmm. uh, and uh, again I would like to emphasize the mission uh, uh, complex is uh, the living proof of Vietnam India cultural interaction and they, uh, it, it also uh, tell the beauty of the Vietnam uh, India cultural interaction now uh, the uh, many uh, even uh, many Indian leaders, when they visit yeah. Vietnam, they would also like to start with the. Uh, uh, they would take time to visit. Yeah. You, know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Doctor Lee. As you were speaking, uh, let me see if I can refer it back. We just showed the photograph of the thousand-year-old shivling, and of course, you refer to it as a, as a stupa uh, because the architectural design style is same, but that comes uh, from the amalgamation of Buddhism, Buddhism into it. You just saw it there thousand year old shivling in vietnam i remember the ambassador uh, jay shankar foreign minister had spoken about there it there it is on your screens okay so what do these uh, professor what do these findings uh, tell us about this indic civilizational link that at least is a thousand years old perhaps two thousand years old i think uh, the like this cultural heritage like the uh, champa kingdom the mm, a story of Ramayana that has come and stay in the mind of the people in Vietnam and also many other countries in Southeast Asia. And this uh, bonding, uh, this uh, influence or this interaction is very, very deep in my opinion. But like, uh, as uh, like, uh, it, it come into the heart of the people, but it's not always visible. So, uh, I, I feel that the Indian influence in Vietnam or in Southeast Asia is much stronger than uh, we think. Like because uh, it has become uh, an instant, inseparable part of our culture. So sometimes we cannot distinguish it. So uh, we cannot separate what is Indian uh, Indic uh, country, what is our indigenous country. Yeah. But I feel that the influence, the um, the aspect of the Indic country is very deep, very much, very deep. I think the words uh, are insufficient to express. But when you learn, when you feel, you uh, when you study, you can feel it. Yeah, it become part uh, part of your human being. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it's so fascinating just listening to all of you. It is so familiar yet uh, yet so different at the same time. Absolutely fascinating. I, re I really appreciate uh, Dr. Lee. Thank you for joining us. My my many thanks to the good ambassador as well. Uh, and for the work that he's done in making sure that at least there are flights to Vietnam now, uh, 17 as we now know, that we can now at least travel and see these places. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. Stay with us. Our marathon telecast is not over. Indonesia, up next. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.